He's the top college player in the country. Tomorrow, Navy basketball star David Robinson. Also, Sammy Hagar of Van Halen. And Brian Dennehy joins us. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Joining us in our Washington bureau is Phil Klass, an editor with Aviation Week magazine and scientific investigation of claims of the paranormal, a group which checks out claims of UFO sightings. Also here in Washington is Stanton Friedman, a physicist who has been involved in nuclear space and research for such companies as General Electric, Westinghouse, and General Motors. He has studied and lectured on UFOs for almost 30 years and is in Washington this week taking part in the International Symposium of the Mutual UFO Network. Mr. Friedman, there are books, there are magazine articles, there are television interview programs which have very little time, such as this one. Give it your best shot. If you are seeking to convince, uh, to convince the skeptical, what do you point to? I'm seeking con to convince the healthy agnostics. The skeptics don't want to listen to the data in my findings. I point to the 2,400 plus landing trenches in the environment collected from 65 the 3,200 cases in Project Blue Book Special Report 14, 20% of which couldn't be explained and are all the characteristics we attribute to flying saucers. I point to the 3,500 pilot sightings collected by a NASA scientist on the West Coast. I point to Bud Hopkins, 140 abductees with a waiting list of 200, and an enormous amount of data in the form of documents, uh, some of them obtained from the government directly, some not so directly, uh, clearly indicating that our planet is being visited that some UFOs are alien spacecraft, and that we are indeed dealing with a cosmic Watergate. Uh, for example, I also point to the 92 different witnesses that William Moore and I have talked to about the Roswell incident that was described briefly in the uh, early piece on now, the program. I'll tell you what, let me make it a little tougher for you. Instead of all these pieces of evidence uh, to which you're referring, refer to one concrete, substantive, visible piece of evidence that exists somewhere, something that we can look at, touch, feel? I, I think you've asked the wrong question. By the nature of the beast, the pieces that were picked up at Roswell, for example, which are described in the document that was alluded to earlier, are not available for your viewing or my viewing. They clearly are top secret eyes only, something above that. I understand, but for example, the abductees, and you say there are how many of them now? A hundred and... There are over 120 of those. Now, none of them has come back with anything except memories. That seems to be the case. They also come back with descriptions of writing. Five of those looked at independently. None of those had any way of knowing what the other people had drawn from what they claimed to have seen. So we have duplication that seems to pass any notion of randomness that would be attributable to, to phony stories, if you will. Mr. Class, what about the all right, five people who come back, make approximate sketches of something that they claim to have seen? Presumably uh, they have not had contact with one another? I don't know. Ted, they're as identical as you and I are. I, I would... I would wish that we were as identical. Uh, let me respond, if I may, to an issue that's come up here that I think is a very important one. These alleged top secret eyes only documents provide ABC, provide the nation an opportunity to find out for themselves firsthand what sort of nonsense the UFO proponents are spouting. I would suggest the following. If ABC thinks there's even 1%, even a 1% chance that those documents are authentic, launch an all-out effort. Go to the president of ABC, ask for 50 of your best investigative journalists, and within a month come back and report either these documents are authentic, we have captured a, cry, a flying saucer, the government has maintained a cover-up for 40 years, or come back and report it's nonsense, and there has never been so great a con job done against the news media and the public as has been perpetrated with the release of these phony documents. Mr. Class, on, on the one hand, you know, you've been a journalist for a long time yourself, that it's not quite as easy as that. But on the other hand, I would, I would take part of what you have said and pose this question to Mr. Friedman. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Washington. I'm very familiar with Washington, and I know that it is almost impossible to keep a story of that sort of dimension without some leak or another filtering out from some part of the bureaucracy or the government establishment 
over a period of 40 days, let alone 40 <laughs> years. Ted, let, let me comment about that. Uh, one thing I am familiar with is I worked on classified programs for 15 years. I had a high-level security clearance. And essentially everybody I've talked to who also has had high-level security clearances agrees fully with the notion that secrets are being kept, that there are dozens, if not hundreds, of so-called black programs impressed with uh, Washington's efforts with regards to UFOs, but let's face it, there have been loads of leaks. Many of the stories, the, the whole work on Roswell came from people who were talking about the pieces of information that they have been aware of. Leaks are all over the place. Willingness to follow up on the leaks is quite another story. I think that the uh, people who want to keep secrets have done a very good job of taking advantage well, of the Stanton, egos of the Washington press corps who think that no secrets can be kept from them. Stanton and his associates have, I think, done the nation a service by making public these documents. And now we can see what the news media of this country, how they evaluate them. As I say, if ABC, if the New York Times, the Washington Post thinks there's even 1% chance that they're authentic, they ought to launch an all-out effort. Let me, just, uh, let me just pose the question a little bit differently, because as I said, we're, we're not going to have a great deal of time tonight to talk about it. There is, is there not, Mr. Friedman, just a tremendous desire on our part. You talk about, uh, you know, the, the intellectual agnostic, but there is a tremendous desire on our part to believe in the existence of some extraterrestrial. I don't think that's the case at all, Ted. I've lectured at over 500 colleges, I've been, I suppose. All the polls, the opinion polls, which the media depend so heavily on in other matters, have shown not only that most people believe in flying saucers, but that the greater the education, the more likely to believe in flying saucers. Let me just add, because we're going to have to take a break, I was looking at some similar polls, and, you know, the same polls also show that 42% of the American public believe in communication with the dead. Uh, maybe, who knows? Does that vary knows, with education in the same way? I, I believe it does, but let's take a break, and we'll continue our conversation in just a moment.